one, th one part of my job at Rackspace is getting around the world and studying technologies that might affect our data centers. And one of these is uh, Emergy Systems, which makes a uh, new flow battery. Uh, we're going to hear about what that all means for uh, the future of the world right now. Yeah, who are you? I'm Bill Watkins, CEO of Emergy. Yeah. Well, uh, tell us a little bit more about who you are. You were CEO of Seagate. And um, well, I've been, I've been here in the Valley, gosh, for 40 years. Um, I started out um, doing um, actually microfilm, floppy disk, um, thin film drive startups, et cetera. Um, my most recent uh, job was CEO of a company called BridgeLux that did um, LEDs. Yeah. Uh, before that, I was CEO of Seagate, and CEO of Seagate for a long time was there about 15 years. Um, and today, I'm here trying to change the world with a battery. So you're always uh, invested in uh, uh, infrastructure companies at some level, right? really. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I so much chase infrastructure. I, you know, <laughs> I, what, or what maybe I, it chases you. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, when I when I left Seagate, I, I actually wasn't going to work, um, but I started getting excited about green clean tech and 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 some of the things going on with LEDs and things like that, and started helping some of my friends in the VC community just think about their business proposal, yeah. and I got into it and. What I really like, I mean, you know, one of the things when you get old like me, you tend not to want to change. You tend to, whatever you've done, you stick with that. And, and I've tried my whole life um, to try to kind of embrace new stuff and, and not do what I've already done. And so you end up trying to change technology. So I'm going to learn all about LEDs. Today, I'll learn about batteries and, and the storage and the impact that, that can make to the world. Now, these aren't the little batteries that go in your cell phone. These are, these are large, big industrial right. batteries. As you, as you think about storage and batteries, and obviously they come out of hard drives, but... Um, the people who, the lithium, lead ash, whatever battery, they had to make some compromises for space. Yeah. In order to be in your hand, to be there, they had to combine the power and the storage together, the energy and the power together. So it all combined, they played out, that's why they were out, because all the chemistry gets combined. If you're not worried about size and space, and you can separate the power generation from the storage, you can create a battery, technically, that should last forever. Yeah. Uh, because you won't have any plating, and you should be able to have a product that, that lasts a long time, delivers the performance you need, but it's not going to be small. Yeah. And that's what we do. And so it comes out of a concept from NASA because they wanted to put batteries in space and they, they can't wear out in three years. <laughs> and, and, and so that's where the concept comes from. But a flow battery basically separates the electrolyte from the power generation. And because of that, we get very, very long life. Now, we're not small, et cetera, et cetera, but for solar, wind, hooking it up to the grid for, uh, uh, to replace a diesel generation or anything like that, perfect solution. Yeah, and there's a lot of new solar uh, uh, systems coming up in Nevada and, and other yeah. places. We drove, uh, this year driving through uh, to Vegas, we saw mile after yeah. mile of solar. Yeah. Well, that's a new thing. Uh, the solar finally is getting it, cheap enough to, right. to put it in lots of places. And, and that's what's happening. I mean, people want to, you know, whether it's, we want to call it clean tech or energy, et cetera, you know, it's been a long time coming. The promise has been a long time. But solar is now getting very, very competitive with, with other forms of energy. It's getting deployed everywhere. And, and as much as we think it's here, when you think about Europe and some of the other places of the world, it's really getting deployed. Yeah. Uh, if you think about today, people, that I was just looking at deal in India. There are uh, 600,000 villages in India. Yeah. 300 of them do not have any electricity or power whatsoever. Another you know, couple hundred thousand, they get a couple hours of electricity a day. So when you think about the ability to put a small solar system in there and have a storage device that allows, if you will, the solar to work at night, now you create a whole, the, the ability to give people electricity, you know, so they can have a computer, can have a light to read, uh, buy a fan, if you will. And so the ability now to take low cost solar, combine it with a storage unit that really allows you to, to, to utilize it 24 seven, you can change this world. Yeah. You can give power to, to a large group of people who don't have it. This company started in India, didn't it? Well, it, it, it was founded by Indian people here in the valley. Yeah. Um, and so they but actually... The in India. Yeah, but they put, they put production in India. We, we probably won't do much production ourselves. We're, we're working with Flextronics and other companies like that to outsource that. Yeah. Our, our key competency is really around the chemistry, the design of the stacks and things like that. And, and the manufacturing is very simple and easy once, once you have the right chemistry. Yeah, it's not building a semiconductor. Right, it's not like semi, very, <laughs> so it's not like low cost plants or anything like that. So. 
I, we saw some of them walking around your plant. Uh, they look like a big refrigerator or and something. And that's what like they that. are. Um, and, they, and they mix two chemicals together. Right. What, well, are, what is the chemicals? Well, we use, a, we use a vanadium process. So what yeah. we do, and we get our, our chains electrons, and I'm not, to be honest, I'm not smart enough to tell you exactly, but we really basically go from a V3 to a VO5, and that's the ion exchange for positive and negative, and that's how it works. Um, and vanadium is a very interesting chemistry in itself, and we're able to do very creative things with that that really allow for this long life, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so you can re recycle this. Right. Let's say you have this uh, generator for 30 years and then a yeah. new technology comes out, you can actually recycle this. Yeah, and, and well, what, yeah. one of the advantages, because it's only vanadium, and vanadium has a value as a commodity in, in the open market, we can actually pull the vanadium back out of the electrolyte and resell it just as pure vanadium. So it gives our electrolyte this residual value, which is really important that instead of buying my battery, I can lease it to you yeah. because I have residual value. So again, it's, it's a very, you know, it, it handles heat very well. We, we run in India right now, you know, 50 degrees C, no problem. Uh, there's no fire problem, it doesn't blow up, it's very safe. Um, and so it's a really quite, you know, it, it, when I first heard about it, I, I didn't really believe, I didn't believe, I thought they're all lying to me. Uh, but as I got involved, started drinking the Kool-Aid, it's really a, a phenomenal thing these guys have done in generating this chemistry and stack. And our goal now with the new management team is to really get it deployed, you know, worldwide and really get the thing going. Yeah. You know, uh, my interest is data centers and keeping data centers up and running. Yeah. Um, how does this compare to like a diesel generator? Well, we think we're very comparable to diesel. You can replace diesel with our battery. Um, in fact, what we're doing now in telecom sites in India and some other places, they use diesel generation as their backup where they're putting our battery in there. And actually, some are putting solar on it, but other people are just hooking it up to the grid um, and storing off the grid. And then when the grid goes down, instead of using a diesel generation, they use our battery. Yeah. Give me a sense of the kilowatt in, in, a, in one of these. Well, we, we, we have systems all the way to two and a half kilowatt of power, uh, 10 kilowatt hours of storage to, you know, 10, 30. And we have a new system out by probably late summer that's going to be 250 kilowatt power and one megawatt of storage. And you can parallel, you can put these in parallel, right? right? Yeah. The thing about our solution is if you want more hours of storage, you just add more chemistry. You don't have to add more power stacks. If you want more power, we just add more stacks. Where if you think about a lithium battery, you have to buy both power and storage every time because yeah. they don't they have no way of separating. So we have great flexibility if we put a system in and you come to us and say, look, I need another 10 hours of storage time. So we just put a tank in there, add more chemistry, now you got 10 hours. Yeah. But how does this compare to other choices for, for storing power? Well, I, again, I think if you- I, At this level, because this, this is look, kilowatt hour storage. I, I actually think flow batteries are, is, is going to be the major platform. But the problem that flow battery companies have had um, is getting their chemistries right. And that's what this company has made a big breakthrough. But in the Valley, I bet there's half a dozen at least companies here in the Valley that are all trying to get this platform concept right. Yeah. The other competitor are people like lithium. Uh, lead acid's really falling apart. But, but you think about lithium. It's got, if you start stacking a megawatt of lithium batteries around, you think you've got a fire problem or a danger. Um, and it's very cost, it's very costly to do that. So we think, you know, from a cost effectiveness, from a safety perspective, uh, and, and at the end of the day, there's no rework for lithium. The production of the chemical is not toxic? Or? Uh, it, I mean, you can't drink it, <laughs> but, but it's a pretty safe chemistry. So, but it's pretty safe other than that. I mean, we have an, there's, You're an not gonna acid, there's an acid in there, so that's why you can't drink it, but, yeah. but it is pretty safe chemistry. Okay. And, um, uh, is it instant on enough to, to run a yep. data center? It is, or, it is or, on, it, it's instant on off. Um, you know, it's, it, the efficiency is about 75% versus a lithium at 85 rounds. So if you put a kilowatt hour in, you're you get about 75% out. 75 out. Um, but you can do that over and over and over. You can cycle down to zero over and over again. If you, if you cycle, for example, a lithium below 50%, you're getting in trouble. You'll, you'll wear that battery out faster. This battery does not wear out. It goes zero back all day long, as much as you want. Um, and instant on, instant charge, um, and again, we give up space to get there. Yeah. Look, there, this is a very interesting field because five years ago, solar wasn't ready, wind wasn't ready, no one was ready for it. Today, they're really ready for storage. If you yeah. look, everyone, even you know, California, starting to mandate there be storage. So, phenomenal opportunity. I mean, this is a trillion dollar market starting yeah. for them. This makes the power grid more efficient. I, certainly in a place like India where the grid is yeah, down that, right. often, right? right? So if you if you're if you're trying to build a technology co company yeah. and your power goes off every five hours, and that that's, that's right. not going to be good, right? right? And, that, and that's where it has a really um, right now is by far the biggest value is where there's weak grid or where there's no electricity, or whatever. You now can deploy this remotely. You think about mines. You think about people like companies like a milk company. They um, 
they can't afford the things to go down. I mean, you can't afford it. So things like that, it becomes very intense. Yeah. People where they have done the rates, for example, Hawaii, we've got some people now buying them from Hawaii, because they have a massive variation on rates. So they get charged, you know, 60 cents a kilowatt hour, some phenomenal watt at, at, at one time. During the day, at night, it's a lot less. Yeah. So what they do, they just want to buy a battery and they charge it on the grid. When the rates are low and when they're being charged high, they want to run their battery. So they're just playing the arbitrage on what the utility is charging on rates. So a lot of applications like that. Is it cheap enough to put it in your house yet? Yeah. And again, and you got to worry about footprint. So you got a footprint. So it's, a, it's a fairly big. Yeah, right. So you have to worry about footprint. And again, it's pretty weighty too. So you don't just stick it on a roof, like stuff like that. And yeah. so you think about like a, like a pool. You know how you how you have your pool or operate your pool. It's about like something like that. Um, I have a farm up in, in Santa Cruz Mountains. And I'm about ready to put one in there as my backup. Uh, I have a diesel backup now. Now I'm already put a solar in there with a uh, with a battery. Yeah, a lot of people, particularly in Germany, yeah. where solar was subsidized, have solar yeah. on their yeah. house. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. they have one of these in the backyard. We have a lot of people want to put a, a group of people coming together, uh, small uh, part of the. They want to buy one for the whole complex. Uh, I mean, there, there's a there's a phenomenal opportunity here, Robert. You think about it, and. You know, I've gone back between centralized storage and decentralized storage. I've gone through, you think about utilities and energy, we have centralized energy. There's a really opportunity for the first time in this world that we as people, we get solar, or it can be wind, and you get a storage, right, battery, and you can get enough energy from the wind or from solar, and with the battery, you can take control of your own energy. Yeah. And if we get the electric cars right, all of a sudden, you as a person, you have your own small microgrid and you control your energy. Yeah. And you think about the whole world, the, the geopolitical situation. You know, the big guys have owned us because they've owned power. They've given us, whether it's kerosene, whether it's oil, gas, whatever. These centralized guys have owned it. There's an opportunity in the next 10 years for you and me and people to take control of energy in a very small microgrid system. And the key to that is having a storage solution that allows this thing to work 24 hours. Yeah. And at the same time, give you independence from the grid. So you're, you're one of the famous CEOs in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Let's switch to that. What, why why, why uh, are you always asked to be CEO of these interesting companies? What, what about you that makes a great CEO? I, I work cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I, work, I work cheap. I, cheap but equity. Right? Yeah, cheap but equity, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I guess because I keep wanting to do it. I mean, a lot of people might, you know, they kind of take their money and go golfing or a wine farm, whatever. I, I like working. I like management teams. I like new technologies. Um, as I said, you know, when I left the last deal, I wasn't going to really work. I got excited about this, and that's, I just get excited. But this is what I do. Yeah. I'll be doing it until someone shoots me or something. What, what is a CEO's job for people who, who hear the word CEO, you know, Steve Jobs or uh, whoever? Well, I, I think it's different people do different things. Um, I'm not a technical. I have a political science degree. So I, I'm not going to go in there and tell people how to design a battery or a drive or an LED. What I try to do is get teams together, get, get processes put together, get everyone working together. And, and that's what I try to do. Um, I have people much smarter than me technically. I have people who, uh, you know, obviously finance and things like that. I just, my whole job is to get us all kind of walking in the same place. It's like, you know, have a plan, have a vision have an end game that we're trying to get to and, and get everyone working with a purpose towards that. So you're a people person. I have to be because that's what that's the only skill I can bring to the game. You have to yeah. figure out how people right, work. Right, right. And other people do things. I mean, when I go into the room, I try to find the smartest guy in that room because I know it's not me. And then I try to help him get done. Because a lot of times the smartest guy in the room doesn't say anything. <laughs> and, and so my job is to find the right guy and then support them and give them stuff. They're usually the quiet one at the corner, <laughs> they right? They can be. I mean, uh, I used to say the biggest biggest mistakes I've always made in management is judging someone how they gave a presentation. Yeah. People can be very slick in a presentation and not be a very good executive. And people can stumble through an, a presentation and be a real good executive. And I, you make, I made part of the biggest mistakes is using that judgment for people. Interesting. Um, how do you solve conflict? I like conflict. Because you're probably, you I, like conflict. I, I, I like a certain amount of conflict. Is that why you like going to sharks? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't think you solve conflict. I think you manage conflict. You want conflict. You want people to feel that they can voice their opinions. I want people to be passionate about their opinions. But what I try to do, and I have these sort of rules, I want you to be passionate. I want you to, you know, argue your point. But it can't be personal. It's about the issue. It's about the subject. It's about the, this is yeah. not about insulting people or that. So you keep it away from the insults. And it's about yeah. whatever problem we're trying to address or whatever opportunity. 
But I want people to be passionate. Um, as, a, as a young guy in the Valley, and I'm growing up with a lot of the, some of the, a lot of famous people, you sometimes confuse you know, passion and drive and be an asshole. And one of the things I had to learn, you can be passionate, you can be driven, but you don't have to be an asshole to people. Yeah. And, and that, learning that is very hard. And, and so I spent a lot of time trying to make sure that happens. Um, but the main thing to do is just keep it not personal. It's about yeah. the issue. That's why I keep Rocky around. Yeah, yeah he, but, but he, look. he slaps me around yeah. if I get to be the yeah. asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you want, you want people yeah. to feel that way. And then once you settle, then you all have to be on the same boat and do it. Any other advice you'd have for a, a 20 year old Y Combinator, you know, entrepreneur who's getting into business um, for the first or second time? Yeah. You know, look, one of the things when I started out, I tried to do things to make money. And as I've said that to a lot of people, once I stopped that and did things I was really interested in and passionate about, I started making money. And, and too many people do things maybe just to make money. And I, and I encourage a lot of young people, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Um, find what you're passionate about. And if it works, Great, you'll make money. If it doesn't work, you'll feel a whole lot better. Uh, but if you only work for money, you're, you're going to get frustrated a lot in this hour. You have to raise money a lot, right? Yep. What's what's that process for, like you? Um, I like for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 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 you know raising money. It's uh, I don't think anyone particularly likes that process. Um, you know, going to people and trying to do it. But you know, at the end of the day, that's my job. Um, I've raised a lot of money in my life. I've sold a lot of stuff. You know, taking Seagate private, taking it public, and it's part of the job. Um, but the ideal is to be honest and fair, and um, and if you believe in what you're doing, you'll find people that believe in you. Yeah. Well, thanks. Where do we uh, hear about Emergy? Um, Emergypower.com. Very cool. All right. So, uh, looking forward to seeing how thanks, you change Robert. the world again. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.